We're going to start this evening with um, the first uh, attempt for your potential municipal government. Can people stick to their minutes? Um, so I'm going to start the evening's proceedings with inviting each of our candidates to take a minute of hi, my name is, and this is why you should vote for me. I'd like to thank the organizers very much for organizing this first all-candidates meeting for us. My name is Ellen Woodsworth. I'm a Cope City Councillor, and I, this is my third term that I'm running for, and I'm running with this slate of Cope and Vision and supporting Gregor Robertson because I think it's important to make sure that Vancouver is a city for everyone. You've known me to stand up against spot rezonings and to make the developers really come forward with their fair share of it, what it takes to make the city affordable for everyone. I worked on the downtown east side for 10 years before I was elected in 2002, and I support neighborhoods. I think they're the strength of the city, and we need area plans for all the neighborhoods that stand at council and can't be overridden. We need more public transit, we need a sea pass, and I hope you're going to take a look at what that means by going to the Coke website. I think we need to support art and arts organizations, and I think we need to support small businesses. Vancouver is going increasingly in the way of the wealthy, and it's not what we want. I think we want to make sure that all our communities are whole communities, and that it's a city, Vancouver is a city for everyone, and you can count on Coke to do that. Councillor Cadman and I have fought very hard, and now I'd like to introduce RJ Aquino, who's running for us for City Council. Vote Coke. Thank you, Ellen. Uh, as Ellen mentioned, I am RJ Aquino, and I'm running for uh, City Council with Coke and Vision. My, uh, my background, my professional background is in business analysis and project management, but what brought me to you in front of you today is my community work within the Filipino community where I would work with young people to reintroduce them to their culture, heritage, and history. And through that community work, I was inspired to run for uh, city council because as a new father, I realized there's a lot of challenges that young families have in the city. And those are the challenges that I want to address for young people and for seniors. Uh, and then that the issues revolve around affordability and ease of transit. And as a co-council candidate, those are the things that I would fight for and advocate for and ensure that we have a Vancouver for everyone. Thank you. Hi, my name is Frank Granby, and I'm a co-candidate for Parkport, sorry. For the past 10 years, I've been a community organizer and activist with the West End Residents Association, as well as being a primary caregiver to my two daughters. I've worked on creating community art projects, community uh, art projects, and community-based uh, engagement tools for the West End Residents Association. The three main issues I'm working on our affordability, uh, sustainability issues, and then citizen engagement. Thank you. Good evening, and thanks for being here. I'm Danelle Greenwell Baker, and I'm running for Pope for Park Court. I worked for the City of Vancouver as a recreation programmer and community recreation programmer coordinator for almost 25 years, so I know the parks and recreation system very well. I'm also very well, or, um, involved in my own community with the Hastings Park and I'm a member of the Open Space Advisory Committee. My number one issue is accessibility and I want to make sure all of our facilities and parks are accessible to everyone. Help us make a Vancouver for everyone. Hi, my name is Jeff Nix. I'm a Vision Vancouver Councillor running with uh, Mayor Gregor Roberts and the whole team. I'm joined tonight by Emily Reimer, concerned the Reimers in the audience. Uh, Brady Louie is going to speak in a minute. We have Constance Barnes, Aaron Jasper, and uh, we're very pleased to be running with Pope Candidates like Ellen Wisworth and RJ Kino. We're focusing on two key things. One is fighting for uh, improved affordability of housing for people who can't afford housing. Uh, more, and we've done a good job, we think, in starting the fight against homelessness by reducing homelessness by 82 percent. And on the other side, we're working very hard to try to make our city much more sustainable through uh, transportation investments like uh, the funding we were helped, helped to achieve a week or so ago for improved bus and uh, SkyTrain investments here in Vancouver. So 
affordability, uh, transportation, the Green City, those are our priorities. We would uh, like to continue to work on all of those files in the coming uh, three years with your support. So thanks very much. Good evening, everyone. My name is Raymond Louis, and I'm a counselor for uh, now three terms, and I've had the honor of serving all of you. I am a father of three children, 16, 13, and 6, and I've been a lifelong resident of Vancouver, born and raised here. And I am asking for your vote once again at this election because we've been able to uh, accomplish some pretty good things this past term. Councillor Meggs has pointed it out in terms of uh, working with senior government, both federal and provincial, finding fund funding for homelessness to address that issue, working uh, on transit issues, and making sure that our, our, uh, our issues in relation to sustainability are also addressed. But some of the things that we have been working on as well are increasing childcare spaces by 8%. 430 some odd spaces have been increased under our term. We've committed money for senior centers in, in our city as well. We are, have made sure that our, our communities have proper planning by the first time put in place uh, um, plans for three separate communities to be planned uh, this next term. And so these are just a few things that we've started, but there's many more things that uh, I hope that over the next term we can implement. And with your support, we can make that happen. Please uh, vote for Raymond Louie. Hello, good evening. My name is Constance Barnes. I'm running for re-election for the Vancouver Park Board with my vision teammates. I think um, Councillor Jeff Mance has pointed everybody out, as well as running with Pope. And uh, of course, Mayor Gregor Robertson. I would say um, what I have really focused on in the past two and a half years is childcare and affordable childcare and accessible childcare, early learning education. Uh, it's something that we are actually 15th in the world which is unacceptable for Canada and all the wealth that we have. We have waiting lists up to two or three years for children um, to get into before uh, before and after school care. I also need to start Kona and I've learned that one of the things the park board is now doing is food programs. So we are actually doing much more at the park board level than we have done in the past years. So I've had an opportunity to put forward a motion, which was also uh, the same similar motion that went to school board and to the city, which is acknowledged childcare is something that's extremely important, and it is a core that we do at the Vancouver Park Board level in our community centers. So my goal is to really focus on getting all levels of government to support that issue. Thank you very much. My name is Eric Jasper. I'm uh, Commissioner of the Vancouver Park Board. I've had the uh, privilege of being the chair for the last two years with the uh, Greater Office of Vision Vancouver. Uh, the last three years have been a bit of a challenge with the uh, financial restraint for the uh, the tough economic times, but I'm proud of the fact that we've kept all of our community centers, our pools, and our rinks open to the public, making sure that affordable programs are available to everybody. Um, we've also looked for opportunities. We've worked in collaboration with the mayor, with other levels of government to get federal funding. Uh, monies that went into the Van Dusen Visitor Center, two artificial fields, three east side parks were reviewed, as well as quite a few sections of the seawall and Stanley Park. So even in the economic situation we found ourselves in, looking for those opportunities to invest in our communities and invest in our neighborhoods. Uh, looking forward to some of my priorities, along with Constance Barnes, my colleague, child care, I think it has to be a top priority. I would also like to see the park work play a more active role in enhancing the biodiversity and habitat of our green space. I would also like to see the park work play a more active role in neighborhood food security. And the one issue that I've been quite vocal on even before getting elected was the whole talk off the leash issue. I think that there's a lot of work we need to do. I'm a West Ender, and I know you folks down here probably have the same problems we are. So uh, thank you for all coming. Thank you for the invite, and uh, vote vision and hope. Hello, uh, my name is Elizabeth Ball. I am running with Suzanne Anton and the entire NPA team, most of whom are here tonight. And I'm particularly thrilled to be working with Suzanne because we worked on City Council together for three years on the years where we negotiated all of the agreements which were moving forward from the province to build new housing for the homeless in the downtown east side. That was a wonderful project, but my specific uh, expertise is in arts and culture and the quality of life in Vancouver. I found a carousel theater company in school, the Waterfront Theater, Performance Works, and helped to develop Granville Island as a place where people wanted to come and enjoy their lives. I would like to be able to bring that expertise back to Vancouver to be able to see that we do have a healthy, 
library, healthy arts and culture for all ages, uh, seniors, students, uh, children. And I would like to take a particular notice of how everything in the city affects our children. I was the chair of the Mayor's Task Force on Child Care, and I'm thrilled to be here tonight. Hi, my name is Bill McCreary. I'm uh, running for City Council with the BNK, and uh, thank you for having us all tonight. I uh, have lived in the West, and sorry, in, in Falls Creek. I just came from the West End, another <laughs> meeting. Um, and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I also was a team park commissioner back in the 1970s, and he was involved, we were involved in the redevelopment of Falls Creek, which you see today is what we planned back then. And uh, I'm very proud of it. Uh, the reason I'm running is partly what John just said. He and I met actually uh, through the Bloedel uh, crisis a couple of years back. And uh, that also motivated me to run for council. And uh, I, uh, I think that uh, we can do a better job. Our NPA team will do a better job. We've got some talented people on it. And uh, I look forward to uh, the new council. And, uh, getting the city's business back on track and uh, keeping track of our finances at the same time. Thank you. Thanks. Hello, uh, my name is Ken Charco. I'm running with Susan Anton and the NPA, and I've been very proud of that. Um, just before I get to uh, some information about myself, I first want to uh, thank everyone that is running for city council. I've had the opportunity to meet most of the people here, and they're all personally really good and they really all truly want to help the city of Vancouver. We may differ on policy, but I truly, everyone I've met here uh, on a personal basis for a short period of time or long, be it NPA co-vision, independence, free, or the new party here as well, they're all wanting to help the city, so I publicly want to thank you for making me a better company. I also want to acknowledge the association for putting this together. And this is the kickoff of the, of the campaign. I'm very excited to be able to do that. And lastly, for acknowledgement, you, the people that are here, it was said earlier that it's important to get, come out and get involved, and it so is, so thank you very much. Uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a long time resident of Yale Town. I was here when Yale Town was not fashionable to be Yale Town. I've seen the affordability climb through the roof, and that's part of the reason I want to get involved. Some background on myself is I'm a small business entrepreneur. I own the Dunbar Theater. I've been elected by all the independent theaters in the province, including Fifth Ave Theater, The Park, The Ridge, the old Hollywood to represent them on the Motion, Pe Motion Picture Theater Association Board to deal with industry-related issues. Thank you so much for your time and enjoy the rest of your evening. And you folks, enjoy your campaign. Looking forward to seeing each and every one of you during the campaign. Thank you very much. Good evening. My name is Sean Bicker, and I would like to thank the Falls Creek Presidents Association for putting on this all candidates debate for us. The creek is very important to my partner Tom, and me and Tom's taking pictures here. Since we moved back to Vancouver from New York five years ago, we've lived around the creek that entire time. Right now, we live in Paris Place. I got involved in politics because I wanted to solve the problem. I had a, a terrible odor and sanitation problem in my building caused by a commercial tenant that nobody seemed to be able to change. And so I got involved in solving that problem and that led to me getting involved in my block and then I got involved in the Keeper Community Group and the Falls Creek Residents Association. And um, then on their behalf, I made, uh, some of you may know me because I co-founded the Vancouver Not Vegas Coalition which opposed the uh, casino expansion at DC Place. I was very proud of that because we prevented a doubling of the uh, gambling licenses that would have been allowed in Vancouver through the, one of the largest and the broadest based coalitions in the city's history. I'm running because I believe that we need more balance on the council. We've had three years under one party. I believe we would need more balance on that council, and that I believe I can be one of the voices that will bring that balance. And I thank you for your time tonight. Thanks for your time. And here's to George Affleck, who's also awesome. <laughs> Hello, I'm George Affleck, as in Ben Affleck, not Affleck the Duck. Uh, I live in uh, Yale Town, just up the street. Uh, my kids go to Falls Creek Elementary across the water. I've been living here for 11 years. Uh, I know the neighborhood very well. I am uh, the element board of the Children's Festival. I'm past chair of the Comedy Festival, 
And uh, it's about giving back. And I, I want to help from within, and that's why I'm doing this. Thanks. Susanna Anton running with the NPA team. Very proud to have so many of my team here tonight. We're running on leadership. Leadership where the buck stops with the mayor. Accountability, so where we will lift the gag order at City Hall, where we'll let staff talk to media again, where we will keep taxes to the rate of inflation, where we've signed the, an accountability accord and we've signed the fair tax pledge. And I'm running on neighborhoods. I actually came into politics, same as uh, Casey Crawford, through soccer. One of the things that was important to me when I first ran for the park board was that public benefits be used for a good public benefit, that neighborhood facilities, community facilities. I remain committed to that. The um, other piece of our platform which I'm particularly enjoying running on is the streetcar. And I see Alan Herbert here, who is a long-standing streetcar fan. The NPA team will be the team that brings the streetcar back to Falls Creek. You, many of you rode on it during the Olympics. We will put it back on track in Vancouver. We will get it started again, and who knows where it will go after it gets running back here in Falls Creek again. We're very proud to be running with the NPA team, the Common Sense team, Suzanne Anton, and all of my crew here today. Thank you very much, and I will pass it over to Fraser Valentine running for school. Thank you. Thanks, Suzanne. My name is Fraser Valentine, and I'm a um, Retired uh, principal, teacher, um, counselor from the Vancouver system, and uh, now I'm working into a transition of uh, trying to give back to the system in the best way I can and navigate through the Vancouver School Board fairly well. Um, I just retired as a human resources manager for all the secondary schools, so I did all the staff and the budgets and, and all the things you need to know about secondary schools. You need to go through me. And um, I also want to say that um, near and dear to my heart, I was a special ed teacher, one of the most uh, enriching parts of my life for 10 years. I do know the class size composition issues very well, and also an ESL counselor and worked with the uh, refugees and the new landed immigrants uh, that came in through the 90s. So uh, I'm uh, looking forward to uh, bringing transparency to the school board and to developing relationships uh, with the straight from the supervision aides to the trades to the teachers and to the administrators and the board. So hopefully bringing together a, a solid team that right now seems a little bit dysfunctional. Thank you very much. I'm Jason Optum. I'm a lifetime Vancouver resident. I'm running for park board with the NPA, Suzanne Anton and the Common Sense team. I am a resident of downtown Vancouver and I'm also a small business owner of downtown. The reason why I'm involved is because I've obviously enjoyed the parks my entire life here in Vancouver and I've seen them have recent budget cuts and I think that it's time to stop that and that the park board was created to be an independent body accountable directly to the public to make sure that the parks are protected and they're looked after and want to bring that independence back to the park board so that you can be sure that every decision that's made on the board level is in the best interest of the parks and those who use them. Thank you. Hello, I'm Melissa DiGenova and I am running with Suzanne Anton and uh, all of my fellow NPA candidates in the Common Sense team. I am the youngest NPA candidate running for park board and I won't bore everyone with my biography. Please feel free to go to my website, melissadiginova.com. However, I've been involved for several years with different community groups and organizations, and uh, one of my fortes is fundraising, which is something that I'd like to bring to the park board, creative funding solutions, including community center renewal, and uh, increasing green space in our parks. And I really like to echo what my fellow candidate Jason here said. Unfortunately, over the past few years, the park board has really lost some of its independence, and uh, when elected, I hope to bring that independence back to the park board. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Casey Crawford. I am running with the NPA team for Park Board. But my background has been in uh, sports fields and youth sporting events. Uh, I have two young sons and we live in the uh, Oak Ridge neighborhood where, we've, uh, where I've been a vice president of Carousel Soccer for six years. I've been uh, a volunteer with Little Mount Baseball and back for Hawks Field Hockey. So I'd like to bring uh, the focus and uh, 
the attention to sports issues, sports issues and youth sports issues as I uh, go forward as your park board uh, uh, commissioner. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jeff Palau, and I'm running for park board with Suzanne and the rest of my NTA colleagues. I have uh, running for park board because as a young urbanite in Vancouver, I feel that recreation is important to me. I live in the Falls Creek area like you do because you know, it's my front yard. I live in a small 600 square foot box and I understand parks and recreation to be the reason why I live here. And I want to have a say in that. I want to make sure that as a paddler, that the paddling facilities here are you know, updated and benefit to everybody, all the thousands of people who do paddle. And I want to see uh, the park board become more independent because as an independent park board, it's what's responsible for the recreation and lifestyle of this city and something I think that we can all associate um, good things with and the reason why most people come to see this city. And next I'll use the rest of my time to introduce the awesome Sean Bickerton here, your own resident and uh, also a you know, Falls Creek native who will be speaking next. <laughs> Hi, good evening everybody. My name is John Cooper. I'm very proud to be running with Susan Anton the Common Sense team. Uh, I got involved with the Saving the Blood Island Conservatory. I was quite appalled at that time that a supposed green mayor would close a greenhouse at the highest point in the city at the actual geographic center of our city. So anyway, it got, it got me involved and I started to get involved in the park board meeting and talk to a lot of people. And also in my walk going around the city, uh, you know, I really feel that we're not looking after things the way we should. And one of the reasons that I decided to get involved with the NPA team is when we were in the middle of that fight, when I was sending emails to the mayor and the council and all the parts board commissioners, and telling me you're quite right, it's hard to get politicians to listen. Suzanne Anton was the only person who responded to my concerns, came up to the conservatory, sat with me, listened to my story, and gave our little group hope, which then became a larger group with 6,000 signatures, and we were able to come up with, I think, an elegant solution by partnering with Van uh, and the Gardens. So I have a real passion for the green spaces in our city. I think we can do better. As I, I'm a new resident of Falls Creek, I just bought a place to live in the village. If you're walking along the seawall, and you see a big sign on one of the balconies, that's on the same balcony that the Australian fighting kangaroo was hanging there. So uh, I went to go by there, that's me, and I hope that I get your vote. And if I do, I'll do my very best to make some big improvements to what we're doing in Park Board. Thank you very much. Good evening. I am Elizabeth Murphy, and I'm running with the uh, new party, Neighbors for Sustainable Vancouver short for um, NSB. And uh, we have five candidates that are, are running with us. Myself, uh, Randy Helton is the mayor, and uh, Terry Martin. And in the audience, we, we have um, Marie Kirchhoff, and, <laughs> and uh, Nicole uh, Benson as well. So uh, I just wanted to let you know that we are the third alternative. We're the only other party uh, besides Vision and the MPA that are running a mayor and, and councillors as well. And we can form a majority with, with others who we may be able to endorse as well. And we would like to see real change in the way things are being run in the city. We're very concerned. We've been actually involved since 2007 with many community issues. but. It has become apparent that the MPA, uh, many of the policies that we were concerned about during the MPA term under Sam Sullivan and Suzanne Anton have also been repeated by Vision, and uh, there really hasn't been any changes, so I'd like to, to put it in a different direction. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Randy Halton, and on November 19th, I'm going to be the new mayor of Vancouver. <laughs> I'd like to tell you why. Um, neighborhoods for Sustainable Vancouver stands the three key letters. Neighborhoods, or neighborhood-based, citizen-based, or not career politicians. Um, the second thing, sustainability. We believe in true sustainability, ecological, social, and financial. And Vancouver, 
We want special solutions that are uniquely suited to this city, not brought in and just transplanted from overseas. Our website is nsvancouver.ca. My background is, uh, for the last more than 20 years, after studying business in BC, I spent uh, a decade overseas, and I've worked on global issues from climate change, uh, forest protection, dealing with global institutions like the World Trade Organization and World Bank, and I've seen what happens when institutions that are supposed to serve our society are dysfunctional. And when that happens, something from outside the system has to come in and change it. Um, I am also am very proud of my running mates with NSV. I've done a lot of work on the local issues in Vancouver as well. And just to close by saying, quoting from the Vancouver Charter, that uh, elected officials are supposed to uh, make decisions that benefit the community, act lawfully and within the authorities of the Vancouver Charter, and be free from undue influence. And the big problem is that Vancouver is the most expensive city in Canada in terms of election campaigns. We're looking at both the major parties counting on $2.5 million in campaign contributions, most, much of it from the development industry. That's the fundamental problem. Thank you. Hello, my name is Terry Martin. I'm the former chair of the Vancouver Board of Variants. And I'm running with Neighborhoods for Sustainable Vancouver because I see this as a real option for Vancouverites. Uh, two, two terms ago, we had the Sam Sullivan government, and Vancouverites voted in my office. And they voted for change, real change, change that was promised by Vision. What did Vision do in their term? They completed every single thing the Sam Sullivan government started. Uh, they talk about community involvement in neighborhoods, and we stand for community involvement and the power of the communities in Vancouver to have a real say and real power in our city. What we've seen in the last three years, and the three years prior to that, is when neighborhoods make submissions, council does the opposite. They, the Dunbar Residents Association was completely opposed to the laneway housing, they put them in. Shaughnessy was opposed to densification, they put it in. Uh, Northway was opposed to mass rezoning their entire neighborhood, they put it in. Uh, uh, the West End, the Stir Towers, it was a 10,000 signature pe petition. What did our council do? They ignored it and they put in those towers. Uh, this has happened in neighborhoods all over our city. It, it occurred in Mount Pleasant, uh, it's occurred in, in, in every one we know of. So we're standing here giving you the opportunity to vote for progressive people that will change the way City Council works in our city. Thank you. Hi everyone, and thanks again for the host for the meeting and for all of you for coming out. My name is Adrian Carr. I'm your only Green Party candidate on the council ballot. So there's one for council, one for parks, Sport our incumbent Stuart McC McKinnon, and one for school board. The question you posed is, why vote for me? I think, number one, that we are at a crossroads in Vancouver in terms of development and just like we were 40 years ago when citizens stopped the development of freeways downtown. We're at a crossroads in how we accommodate growth and you need the very best possible people on council. I can be that person. I've got background that you probably don't know about. A master's degree in urban geography from UBC. I did my master's thesis working with uh, Walter Hardwick, who was uh, one of the first people who raised from Wall Street in terms of redevelopment. Um, on, my thesis was on the role of community groups in actually creating community spirit and stopping inappropriate development in Kitsilano. I think those are the same issues that we're facing today. I see problems that relate to the accommodation of growth, and we're not doing it as well as we could. Problems still of congestion, problems to do with putting high-rise developments in neighborhoods they don't belong. I have the skills to deal with those issues. We are aiming to be the greenest city in the world. You could get no one with better credentials on the green line than me. Um, I'm really urging you to vote for me. More than that, I'd be honored by your vote. I am not a politician, 
but I am on the outside fighting for Parks Park and for City Hall since 1960 when I arrived in Vancouver with my, as a widow with my daughter and by chance I stayed in the last apartment building on English Bay before they turn it down to complete the uh, English Bay Beach as it is now. And that's right across the street from Parks Park, um, uh, right on the edge of Stanley Park. And I started going to uh, Parks Park meetings and City Hall meetings as a stranger in town, although I was and I'm not a stranger in uh, Canada, I was born in Ontario. So, um, it, ever since then, I've been trying to say Stanley Park, it seems that I've been fighting against the aquarium and the parks board. And uh, just uh, this uh, summer, this parks board commissioner gave the aquarium permission to uh, build four buildings, one seven stories high, and two more new well pools. I was the only one there to oppose it. And that's what's happened to public meetings. Nobody goes, I go. And I've been going there since the 1960s. So I advise all you people, there aren't many from uh, this area, most of them are politicians that I'm looking at. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I advise people to go to the uh, public meetings because uh, the politicians like it when you don't come. Then they do whatever they want. So I was so upset uh, about uh, the, the park score and getting all that land to send the aquarium for free, and uh, they're not supposed to have buildings uh, in Stanley Park. I have the mandate, and the mandate in 1988 says that the Stanley Park, uh, the federal government leads it to um, Vancouver City and um, uh, to maintain it. The Vancouver City taxpayers are the only ones that pay for the maintenance of Stanley Park on the beach. So it seems that I have a lot of, uh, my footprints are all over Vancouver. Engine 374 in the Rock House would be there if I didn't fight for it with a car.
in exchange for community amenities that included 42 acres of park green space in accordance with the city policy of 2.75 acres of parkland for every 1,000 residents. That 42 acres included the yet undeveloped 9.06 acre Creekside Park extension on what we call Lot 9. To date, more than 10,000 residential units have been built by Comfort Pacific, and not only has there been no increase in required green space, but Creekside Park still remains undeveloped and undelivered to the City of Vancouver. Lot 9 remains, in the City's terms, a lucrative commercial venture. Successive councils under Mayor Larry Campbell, Sam Sullivan, and now Gregor Robertson have accepted this situation and have even condoned it. An option favored by many is to allow Comfort Pacific to build a high tower at the foot of Georgia on Lot 6C and save all of the nine acres and waterfront for park. The high tower would interfere with the new the view corridor from the Camping Bridge only. Two weeks ago, City Council voted in favor of a proposal to reconfigure Creekside Park in principle, essentially in favor of the Belford making millions more dollars from waterfront and waterview towers on the park site, but without a sunset clause or a performance bond to ensure the park development. So our questions are, in general, what would you do to ensure such commitments are honored? And specifically, what would you do to expedite the delivery of Creekside Park to the citizens of Vancouver? And how would you ensure that land used for lucrative commercial activity is taxed accordingly? And would you support the compromise of a high tower? More than one question, I know, but I'm hoping you can roll it all into your hands. Right, for one minute. And just so that you don't feel sorry for any of these guys, they've had quite a few number of days to digest this question. So I'm going to ask uh, first a representative uh, from Vision Vancouver to respond. Who's going to take that? Jeff or Raymond? Great. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Vernon. So the question is multi-parted. Uh, first of all, uh, yes, it's true that it has been multi, multiple political parties that have had control of uh, council during that development phase. I just want to point out that when those extra densities were uh, implemented as part of that increased density on the uh, developed parts, there were instructions from the developer uh, in terms of community amenities and additional DCLs that were paid when those additional densities were allowed. And that's Probably, that's one clarification, that's why the park hasn't been developed at this point in time. So, specifically to the park itself, uh, just recently council approved of a reconfiguration in principle, but there's no guarantee that in fact that will happen. It still requires an extensive amount of public uh, consultation, it still requires a full uh, plan that's brought before council for us to adopt, and then the ultimate rezoning, which requires public access, uh, uh, public consultation as well before any of that. So none of it is uh, fairly complete, and certainly the, uh, we expect the community to be very actively involved with all of those discussions prior to us making a final decision on it. So the, what was the other piece? When was the taxation, was it? Or a view quarter? Is that right? How do you ensure that land for lucrative commercial activity is taxed accordingly. Well, we've done some exploration of this, and it has been a bit of a thorn in our side that's um, uh, based on the BC Assessment uh, 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 Authority. They've taxed it. They've given us the tax rule, and we implement the tax rule according to what BC Assessment gives gives to us. It, this, that is a provincial authority and not under the control of the city of Vancouver. And so that we, we just essentially take whatever all of you as property owners take as the assessed value and implement it according to the tax rate for within that class. The last question I think was in regards to the uh, view quarter and uh, whether or not we would be inclined to uh, intrude upon that view quarter that, was, uh, that is preserved for future generations. In, in favor of a more condensed development? And the, answer, the short answer to that is no. no that is uh, one of the kind of key uh, areas where this council made a, a very firm decision in regards to all of our view corridors, preserve them for the futures in order that uh, they can enjoy those used to the mountain, the street energy used to the water, 
and for the livability of our city to continue, uh, not just for one specific area, but for our entire city as well. And that's why we maintain that uh, and preserve those view corridors for uh, multiple generations to come. I do think that the, the development potential on the site uh, will need to be looked at carefully, and there may be some additional density uh, across some of the, the building forms, but uh, that's of course is part of the detailed uh, analysis that will have to come at the later stages. I have to be careful, of course, because if I am re-elected to council, I will be judging this uh, what on its merits, and so I don't want to prejudge and make a firm statement, and I would suggest all of the council candidates to be careful of how they phrase their statements leading up to this as well. So can I just um, say that how does approving in principle the reconfiguration of the park expedite the good, park. Very good question. Thanks for that, Matt. So we were, we, what we did when we turned down the casino application and the 5B West and 5B East uh, uh, as part of that casino application, what we said was, uh, Concord, you must revisit all of this all of your lands and all of this uh, development uh, potential and look for ways and work with city staff to find a way to expedite the, uh, the development of, of that park. And so what, we, what staff came back with was that they uh, needed to understand what development potential was available and move us down a path of, uh, of planning for that area in order for them to determine what the price would be, what the cost would be for that development of, of that site. So, with that possible reconfiguration, it, it, we've given some guidance to staff. Concord Pacific now knows what is possible, what the cost parameters might be, and we'll be able to better uh, and, uh, determine what, those, what the cost would be, thereby expediting the, the, uh, the provision of the park and uh, the, uh, the uh, nominal rise marina that council also passed as part of that preliminary approval. Sort of long, long answer. Right. Come talk to me afterwards. <laughs> Who will answer um, on, on behalf of MPA? Thanks, Rick. Uh, well, with all due respect to Councillor Louis, uh, you can see why this has been such an intractable problem. I'm not quite sure what he said, and I don't understand the meaning of what he meant. Uh, and it's no disrespect to him, that's what's been going on for years now. The mayor has tied the city up. For three years, actually you've been tied up for four years now in meetings, endless meetings. First there was a high level review, then we had the Northeast Falls Creek Joint Working Group. Uh, members of your association have been attending those meetings for four years now. Week after week after week, meeting after meeting. And it's all it's done is tie people up in knots. And they've involved so many people in this uh, impossibly structured consultation that nothing is clear, nothing gets done, nothing changes. We are sitting exactly where we were three years ago, ex with the exception that they have approved the reconfiguration of a park that nobody wants. They produced a stepchild that nobody loves, I'm afraid. And even they don't want it, and even Councillor Louie, in all honesty, isn't trying to sell that reconfigured park to you because he knows that nobody wants it in the community, and even the developer isn't enthusiastic about it. So, what do we do? All that's needed is a political solution. And a situation like this is a Gordian knot. Uh, it's, we, it's held up development in that corner, finishing that corner of the park for years now, and it requires a political solution. A very simple solution would be to say to the proponent, okay, uh, no, just wait, I think Councillor Lee got more than a minute, so I'm going to take a little bit more than a minute too. Uh, work on this, this is a tough one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll try to hold myself to one. So, simple answer is, you keep towers off lot 9, which was promised for the park 25 years ago. That's simple. Another simple principle is, the developer, in order to give up what their aspirations on that lot 9, would be to give them additional density on lot 6C, which is right near BC Place. And with that additional density, they would be willing, with some additional incentives, to relinquish their plan to build towers on what we want for our park. The, the council passed a reconfiguration that really is the worst of all solutions. Uh, it would be better to keep the park as promised on Lot 9. Uh, and we also need, though, an incentive that will get the thing built in 
within a reasonable time. So what we have proposed at various points was that the developer transfer ownership of the lot line to the province for one dollar. The province would lease that lot to the city for a dollar. And the city would take immediate ownership of lot line. That would solve this issue of them having control of the clock. Then you work out the configuration of 6C and the other pieces that have to fit together, the way the Georgia steps are going to come down and whatnot. And you leave those problems separate and then you, can, you're, you, you allow the problems to proceed because they're holding the lease on lot 9 and they can re remediate the soils that they need to and then the park can be built. And that would at least see it done within 10 years and hopefully within five. And I think that's the simple solution. <laughs> Well, first of all, I think we need a nine-acre park for this community. This community is short on amenities. The developers are tall on making millions and millions of dollars on the development proposed in the Northeast Falls Creek. And I think that what is being asked for by this community is a full nine-acre park to not even come up to what we need, which is the park guidelines of about 2.75 acres per thousand population. What we need to do is we, and what I wanted and what I voted for is to get that park happening immediately, as quickly as possible. And I think Council Louie explained some of the difficulties of moving it quickly, but I think there's a clear indication that that's what's needed because you're sharing your park with people coming in, tourists, you're sharing those of us who bike along it, those of us who walk along it. And the fact is, I don't think higher density be granted to them, I think on 6C is what you're proposing, Sean, is right. Why should they get more density to provide something they've already promised to give anyways? It just doesn't make sense. This is, a, I, I'm speaking, Sean, this is uh, an issue that we're seeing in the West End, we're seeing it on Kingsway, we're seeing it in Northeast Falls Creek, we're seeing it all over the city where the developers are thinking that they can go and higher and higher and higher and not provide the amenities necessary for that density. And I think the part is the least we can do. And in terms of uh, them being charged commercial rates for use of land that they're using commercially, of course. I've raised this publicly, I've raised this in council. It's outrageous that they should be using that plan to have all kinds of, uh, that piece of land for all kinds of sporting events. And they're not charged commercial rates. But you've gone to the courts, and that one we lost, but I agree with you, not, it's been appealed? We have, we have uh, appealed the assessment and we're waiting. And I completely support you, and I've been public about that, I think that's really, really important. And I think we need to make sure that this is a whole community with all the amenities you need. You know, I think we need to go ahead with the community center, but we need to ask for more because we know that what's being developed here is creating millions of dollars worth of wealth for a few, not, few developers, and your community is so stretched for the, the community amenities you need here. And we need to be speaking in one voice on council with the community, and I will do that. Occupy Concord. Um, thanks very much. Um, first of all, the, you asked four questions, um, but one of them was really around how you can deliver uh, on the commitments, how, the, how you can honor them. And honestly, you can only do that if you go into a negotiation around what's going to happen with the land use with the intent to honor it. So transparency, openness, involvement of all the stakeholders. I think the committee that brought together those in the development sector with the local community residents is extraordinarily important because the city is only an arbitrator in that. Um, so uh, the, the final result will be an agreement which must be honored. In that agreement, how can you deliver on the park faster was your second question. It seems to me the reconfiguration of the park in exchange for higher density is the solution that people within City Hall came up with to deliver the park faster. Um, the Green Party and our Parks Board candidate Stuart McKinnon feels very strongly about this, would be open 
to a reconfigured park only on two pr premises. Number one, uh, that there's no net loss of green space because this community needs more green space. And number two, that the citizens of this community are in support of it. In terms of the higher densities and the commercial associated space, it's really important to tax, you know, we need fairness, a level playing field in the city. You have to tax land use according to land use. It's not fair to make that part of a deal in exchange for giving a park which was already there from 25 years ago was a promise. Um, so commercial tax rate, yes, I, I didn't quite think you answered that actually clearly in terms of what city can do about taxing. The city can indeed, and does, tax by mill rate differently for commercial and for residential property. So it does have the ability to ensure that that property that's used for commercial purposes is taxed for commercial purposes. There was a fourth, but I've gone over my time. I can only answer so many at once. Thank you. I'm speaking for uh, neighborhoods for Sustainable Vancouver. Um, I'm speaking for neighborhoods, and I think your neighborhood is as important as any other neighborhood. All my life I've believed that when you make a deal, the deal is a deal. The deal was struck. They, they made a deal to get 7,650 units approved. They got 30% more than that. The city of Vancouver has more than upheld their end of the deal. So where are we left? We're left having to force the developer to hold up their end of the deal. That's simply the way I see it. And however the city goes about that is what it has to do. You deserve your park. You've waited long enough for it. Uh, it doesn't seem to be an honest carrying out of what was agreed upon. And uh, I, for one, would try and ensure that whatever was agreed to in the original deal was what was produced. And that's your nine acre park. That's what we'll fight for. And we're going to move to the two mayoralty question uh, because I, I know um, we, do, we don't want uh, we don't want to let uh, Randy or Suzanne escape without uh, having their special two minute response. Uh, so um, who has my sheet? Ah, okay. So here is your mayoralty question. What do you recommend as an appropriate method of citizen and community engagement in planning processes? This simple question will get you either of you a PhD. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kurt. Neighborhoods know best what goes on in their own neighborhoods. They know they know what neighborhood they know what their neighborhoods need. They know what works well in their neighborhoods. They know what deficiencies are in their neighborhoods. They know if they have the right amount of parks, the right amount of rings, whether the pool is leaking or not. Neighborhoods know they know their neighborhoods, and the city needs to be listening and paying attention. Through the city plan process, there have been some pretty good neighborhood committees, the vision implementation teams. Now, they don't cover the whole city, but they cover the nine areas where the community visions were passed. Those teams have been allowed to languish in this current council. They've had their funding taken away. They've had their staffing taken away. It is impossible for them to function well. It is impossible for them to good, give good input to the city. It is impossible for them to stay as engaged in their own neighborhoods as they would like to when they've lost their communications funding, when they've lost their staffing. We need to reinstate those positions, we need to reinstate that funding, and I will, be under, I will do that as Mayor of Vancouver. There are neighborhood plans uh, filling in some of the gaps. The West End, Grandview, and Marpole are coming, and then there are others that are remaining to be done. We need to put that vision implementation process into those neighborhoods as well so that we have committees in each neighborhood in the city covering the city. Those teams are invaluable. They'll tell you from details like where to put a stop sign all the way up to how to build a major facility and everything in between. 
They are the voices we need to listen to. I've been listening to neighborhoods for nine years, in my three years on the park board, and my six years on council. I've certainly been to every neighborhood in the city many, many times. And we've been out in our NPA team in the course of this campaign listening again. And I'll tell you, even though you think you know what you, you think you know the issues, I'm always taken by surprise at things that I hadn't heard of before that I didn't know very well. The job of the politician is to never stop listening. The job of council is to never stop listening to the neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, um, what is the problem and what is the solution? The problem is that City Hall is not listening to the citizens. Uh, the problem is very deep and Vancouver is at a fork in the road on November 19th. This is the, the election that is going to determine, determine the future of our city. Um, I've been with many citizens at City Hall spending a lot of my time in the last few years only to be ignored, mocked and even attacked in some ways on the internet. Uh, as a result, I found the need to establish cityhallwatch.ca and metromanwatch.ca. Neighborhoods for Sustainable Vancouver groups all over the city are aware of how many hours have been spent over the last three years and longer. Uh, community, the city is moving away from respect for communities and citizens and moving towards more central control. This has to change. I think it goes back again to campaign financing. Who is paying for these elections? and what promises are being made. The solution, I think, well, there are many ways for community planning, and probably they can continue. There are charrettes, there's uh, social media, public hearings, open houses, many ways of consulting, and those probably will continue. They have to continue. I can't imagine any new invention that's gonna suddenly change this. But what comes, what the bottom line is very human values of trust and respect. And on July 8th, 2010, uh, when I spoke to, to City Council about an important issue, my message to the Mayor and the Council sitting at the time was that our whole city has to function based on trust. If we cannot trust City Hall, we are wasting our time going to Council to speak. And the result from the Mayor was the famous F-bomb incident. We need to go back to a city that we can trust so citizens can live their lives know that the council is listening and able to balance all the complex issues of the city. There are many stakeholders here, including developers and investors and citizens groups, neighborhoods groups, business groups, large and small. The job of the elected official is to take all of those interests and make a wise decision that we know we can trust and respect. Then we can all go back to our lives and do what we're supposed to do and what we want to do. Thank you.